Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, I want to talk to you about Philip. Um, Philip is the most interesting apostle. Um, he, he is the only apostle that has a Greek name. And that uh, puts him in a complete different league than everybody else. We don't know why he has a, a Greek name. Is it maybe because his father was Greek um, or his mother was Greek? We don't really know. But he's the only one with the Greek name, which means that it's very likely that Philip was not 100% Jewish. Uh, his name means lover of horses. And uh, we find the first encounter between Jesus and Philip in John chapter 1. John seems to uh, be able to focus on these amazing encounters that the uh, original apostles or disciples uh, and later apostles have with Jesus. So in, in, in chapter 1, we find uh, uh, Jesus um, calling on Andrew and then Peter um, to follow him. Uh, John and James uh, uh, following the same sort of um, uh, follow suit. Then the next day, we are told that Jesus goes to Galilee, to Bethsaida, the place where Peter and John come uh, uh, come from. Um, sorry, Andrew and Peter. Andrew and Peter come from. And he finds Philip. And uh, he says to Philip, simply, come, follow me. Now, we, we, we talked a little bit about the fact that uh, Peter, Andrew, James, and John are the first group of intimates. And, and, and that's very important because Philip now begins the second group. Uh, the first group, it's, it's the disciples that Jesus seems to take with him all the time. And I said to you, this is not the clique. This is not, uh, uh, Jesus doesn't have favorites, but he's got intimates. He's got people that are very, very close to him. It doesn't mean that he treats all the other disciples in a different way. No, uh, um, uh, he does not have favorites. He treats them the same. Um, he, he doesn't entertain the, the, the discussion that they have with who's the greatest. He actually rebukes them on this issue. Um, but Philip is the first one of the second group uh, of four. Um, and and, and his, his life is amazing because the moment he finds Jesus, he goes and finds Nathaniel. So Philip, just like Andrew, goes and finds a friend, Nathaniel, and uh, uh, says to Nathaniel, we have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. And that's when Nathaniel says, Nazareth? I mean, that's such a small place. What good can, can come out of Nazareth? In other words, he's very realistic about things. But we'll talk about Nathaniel an, another time. And what amazes me is from this interaction uh, proves to me that Philip was really searching the scriptures. Because when he finds Jesus, the first thing he says, hey, we found the one that Moses talked about. So obviously, Philip has been searching the scriptures, and now he's able to recognize that the one that Moses talked about is found in Jesus. Now, the first amazing thing that we find about Philip uh, is that Jesus is taking time to teach Philip lessons. And the first lesson uh, that Philip needs to learn is about faith. Uh, it's very likely that Philip, uh, by personality, was a man of detail, a man that uh, loved maths and a man in whose mind was very much mathematical. One plus one will always be two. And there is no way in the world would one plus one make three. And, and Jesus takes the time to teach him a lesson. So uh, the first encounter like that is found in John chapter 6. And in John chapter 6, Jesus is surrounded by the crowd. He sees the crowd. And, and you can imagine there are 5,000 men. So if you add the women and the children, you could add up with 10, 12,000 people. And uh, uh, when Jesus sees the crowd... I, I, I love this picture of, of Jesus seeing the crowd. He knows what he's going to do, but he turns to Philip to test him. It says here, 
uh, Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Now, Philip, a man of detail, a man of one plus one is always two, replies, even if we work for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. In other words, he's saying, Jesus, I see the crowd and I see the money that we have. And it's impossible. Can't do it. And, and, and the Bible tells us here, Jesus knew what he was going to do, but he turned to Philip because he needs to teach him a lesson. And sometimes, friends, we need to learn that lesson of faith. Listen, I know one plus one is always two. But maths change when Jesus comes on the scene. Because that very day, Jesus takes five loaves, two fish, and feeds ten to 12,000 people. And uh, Andrew finds that there is a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Sometimes what we need to do is learn this lesson like Philip. That whatever I have, when I give it to Jesus, miracles can happen. And Philip needed to learn that because he was such a man of detail that in his mind, it just doesn't work. It's not possible. And faith teaches me that nothing is impossible with God. That's what faith is. Faith is not some illogical thing. Faith is trusting the one that is able to do things outside of natural laws. Faith is in Jesus. Faith is, in, is not in, it's not in the miracle itself. Faith is in Jesus. And so I can only imagine Philip's face that day when he saw Jesus performing that miraculous sign and, and him being, uh, being able to pick up 12 baskets of leftovers once Jesus feeds the crowd. The next lesson that Philip has to learn is found in John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, we find uh, some Greek people coming to see Jesus. They come to Philip. Why? Because he's the one that has a Greek name. So they kind of think, well, let's go to the Greek one. Maybe because he's Greek, he's going to introduce us to Jesus. We want to see Jesus. But again, Philip, as a man of detail, as a man of principles, he connects Messiah with the Jews. And then he says, you're Greek. I'm not sure that's going to work. And he doesn't know what to do. And the only way to get out of that is to go to Andrew and say, Andrew, can you, can you help me out? Um, I, I love this. journey that Philip has to go through. And um, I love the fact that um, uh, Jesus takes that time to journey with Philip. When, when, when Greeks come to see Jesus, um, Philip says, ah, I, I need somebody else. I need help here. And, and that's no problem at all. Um, there are times when we need to get help from other people because we are overwhelmed. We are, we, you know, our, our processing, uh, uh, our brain doesn't seem to process very well and, and, and we panic and what, what do I do here? What do I, and, and that's when, that's when we need to rely on others. It's, it's a teamwork. The Greeks come to Philip. Philip can't deal with it, but, but he goes to Andrew and Andrew says, well, I know what to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take them to Jesus. And I, I, love, this, I love this scene um, 
in, in, in verse uh, 22, um, we, we read, um, in, in verse 20, some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration paid a visit to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. They said, sir, we want to meet Jesus. Philip told Andrew about it, and they went together to ask Jesus. And, and, and Jesus begins to speak to them about the suffering that he's going to uh, uh, go through um, and, and, and how he's going to be glorified uh, through all that. So uh, uh, it's, it's an amazing lesson uh, that Philip is learning. Then the, the next one happens in John 14. In John 14, Jesus um, gives us the, this amazing, amazing words. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There's more than enough room in my father's home or mansions, if you prefer that. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you when everything is ready? I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way where I'm going. Now, there's only two people that, that uh, uh, engage with Jesus in, in the conversation. One is Thomas. Thomas says, we have no idea where you're going. Then Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Then Philip, again, a man of detail, uh, says, Philip says, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. As a man of detail, he searched the scriptures and, and he uh, was very detailed in that and, 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 and just couldn't connect Jesus and the Father. How, and, and Jesus teaches him a, a powerful lesson. Philip, have I been with you all this time and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but the Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I find I find Philip's testimony, Philip's life, quite astounding. These are the lessons that you and I have to learn. We need to have faith that when things seem to be impossible, to believe that they are possible because Jesus changes everything. I need to learn that in spite of my prejudice, in spite of my background, anybody can be presented to Jesus. I need to learn to trust Jesus at his word, even when for that moment, it doesn't make sense. Philip uh, was struggling to understand how how do I connect Jesus and God the Father? And, and because he's so willing to experience the Father, said, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. He needs to learn to trust Jesus. It's good to have people of detail. It's good to have people like Philip. I, I don't know whether you identify with Philip or not. Maybe there is a little bit of Philip in all of us. Because all of us need to learn to have faith. All of us need to learn to lay down our prejudice. All of us need to learn to trust the words of Jesus more. No matter what our need of learning is, understand this. Jesus takes time to teach us. And that's the most comforting thing we could ever experience. So I might be a bit of a Philip. I'm glad that the Lord takes time to teach me, to test me, to ask me questions that I may learn to trust him more. So I pray that tonight as you discuss Philip, you will learn to trust him more. God bless you.